Welcome back to week two of learning about cedar. This week we're going to be learning about gathering cedar, specifically cedar boughs and cedar bark. And so like I said, um, a lot of us use cedar for smudging. We're going to make some tea, some cleaner, and some smudging with the cedar boughs. And so when you're picking the cedar boughs, you want the really bright green, kind of fresh and alive. And as you can see, these ones are at a different stage in their life where they're getting a little dull, they're falling apart, they're getting a little brown and rust covered. So you always want to be kind of mindful when you're picking your boughs and kind of look for the fresh green ones. Here's an example of some healthier boughs. As you start to gather, you should always leave an offering and appreciation for the plants you're about to collect. Uh, some people offer tobacco, some offer a song, and I was taught to offer some beads and antillium. So here's what I leave an offering for the plants when I go and gather. Now I'm going to talk about how I gather cedar bark. The first part is looking for a tree with not a lot of branches so you can get a nice long piece of bark. You start by making a cut pretty low to the ground. I'm using an adze here, but I've also used a hatchet. You want to make it a hand length or more wide so you can get a nice long piece. You want to make sure you get all the way down to the wood of the cedar so you'll start to see the light yellow color when you know you're deep enough as well. Once you've got that, you can start to make cuts along the side to guide and start to be able to lift up the first little square with your hands. Once it's started, you can start pulling it directly off the trunk just like this. If you've got it at the right time of the year, there shouldn't be any pieces sticking to the trunk and you should be able to get this nice yellow color as you get all the layers of the bark that you want. For comparison, here's a photo when we tried a couple weeks earlier and it was still too early. You can actually see those little dots of sap and that actually keeps the bark stuck to the tree and doesn't allow you to get all of it off. As you can see, pieces of bark get pretty long and as you get to the end, you start to have to shake it a little bit to get it all the way down to the end. It's a bit of hard work, but just keep at it, and then eventually you'll get it and the piece will break off. Now that we've got it off, we place it on a log to peel off the bark. So the first step, Greg's just using a draw knife to start to pull off the outer loose bark. Once you've got that first layer of the rough outer bark off, you have to keep getting it till you get nice down to this nice pink color you see. So sometimes it takes a little bit of work and you have to use a knife to peel it up. Once you're done peeling, you can go ahead and roll up your cedar bark to make it easy for transport. And then you're going to have to hang it out somewhere to dry, maybe up in your house or somewhere with good airflow. And it's going to take a whole year for it to dry and be ready for weaving. Thanks for joining me as I shared about how I gather cedar. Join us next time for part three using cedar as medicine.